my dear students welcome back to our channel in this video i will be explaining the mca second semester subject operations research as prescribed by usmania university and other universities of telangana we will go through the important questions and answers one by one let's begin with a quick revision unit 4 first important short question is what is dynamic programming dynamic programming dp dynamic programming is a method used in operations research to solve complex problems by breaking them into smaller sub problems and solving each sub problem only once the solutions of sub problems are stored and reused which saves time and effort it is most useful when a problem has two properties one overlapping sub problems the same sub problems repeat many times two optimal sub structure the overall best solution can be built from the best solutions of smaller problems example suppose a farmer wants to cut a rod of length 4 into smaller pieces to maximize profit different lengths have different prices using dp we check all possible cuts step by step and store the best profits for each length finally we combine them to get the maximum profit for length 4 easy trick to remember dynamic programming is equal to divide store reuse optimize it is widely applied in shortest path problems resource allocation and scheduling next unit 4 top long questions first important long question is explain the applications of dynamic programming with suitable examples applications of dynamic programming dp dynamic programming dp is a powerful method to solve problems by dividing them into smaller sub problems solving each ones and reusing their results it is widely applied in operations research for decision making and optimization one shortest path problems use finding the minimum distance or cost between two points in a network example a delivery company wants the shortest route from hyderabad to vijayawada using dp we calculate the shortest path step by step through all possible routes two resource allocation use distributing limited resources money machines manpower to maximize output or profit example a company has 10 lakhs rupees to invest in three projects dp helps in finding the best way to divide the money among projects to maximize total returns three knapsack problem use selecting items with maximum value within a limited capacity weight or budget example a student has a bag with 15 kilograms limit using dp they can decide which books and gadgets to carry to maximize usefulness without exceeding weight four production and inventory control use planning production and storage to meet demand at minimum cost example a factory producing fans must decide how many units to produce monthly while considering demand and storage costs dp provides the least cost plan five reliability and equipment replacement use deciding when to replace equipment for minimum cost or maximum efficiency example a bus company uses dp to decide after how many years a bus should be replaced to minimize repair and maintenance costs easy trick to remember applications spark shortest path production inventory allocation of resources replacement knapsack in short dp is like solving a puzzle piece by piece and then combining them to get the best possible solution next important long question is to describe the solution of linear programming problems using dynamic programming solution of linear programming problems using dynamic programming linear programming lp is about finding the best solution maximum profit or minimum cost under given constraints 
Normally, we solve AP using simplex method or graphical method, but when the problem is large and complex, dynamic programming, DP, can also be used. Basic idea. Dynamic programming solves an AP problem by breaking it into smaller stages and solving each stage step by step. At each stage, we make the best decision locally, and by combining all stages, we get the global optimum solution. Steps in DP approach to AP 1. Define the stages. Each stage represents one decision variable, like x, x, x. 2. Define states. These are the available resources at each stage, like capacity or budget left. 3. Recurrence relation. Write a formula that links decisions of one stage to the next. 4. Boundary condition. Start with initial resources. 5. Optimal solution. Work backwards to find the maximum minimum value. Example. Problem. Maximize Z is equal to 3x plus 5x. Subject to x plus 2x less than or equal to 4, x, x greater than or equal to 0. Solution using DP. Stage 1, decision on x. State is equal to total capacity, 4. If we choose x is equal to 0, left capacity is equal to 4. Profit is equal to 3, 0, is equal to 0. If x is equal to 1, left capacity is equal to 3. Profit is equal to 3, 1, is equal to 3. If x is equal to 2, left capacity is equal to 2. Profit is equal to 6. If x is equal to 3, left capacity is equal to 1. Profit is equal to 9. If x is equal to 4, left capacity is equal to 0. Profit is equal to 12. Stage 2, now allocate leftover capacity for x. Each x consumes 2 units capacity and gives 5 profit. Best option is x is equal to 2, since 2 times 2 equals 4 capacity, 2 times 5 equals 10 profit. Final optimal solution. x is equal to 2, x is equal to 1 total profit is equal to 3, 2 plus 5, 1 is equal to 11. This satisfies the constraint 2 plus 2 times 1 equals 4. Conclusion Dynamic programming helps in solving AP by treating it as a multistage decision problem. Though not as fast as the simplex method for big problems, DP gives a step-by-step, -step, logical way to reach the optimum solution. Easy tip, remember AP by DP as stage, state, solve method. Next important long question is 3. Explain in detail the basics of queuing theory and its importance in operations research. Basics of queuing theory and its importance in operations research. In real life, we often wait in a queue, line, at a bank counter, railway station, hospital or call center. Studying these waiting lines scientifically is called queuing theory. It is an important part of operations research that helps in analyzing and reducing waiting times while keeping costs low. Basics of queuing theory A queuing system has three main parts. 1. Arrival process – how customers or items arrive. For example, patients arriving at a clinic. Usually arrivals are random and follow a poison distribution. 2. Service mechanism, how service is given. It includes number of servers, single doctor, multiple counters, service rate, and time taken. Often, service time follows an exponential distribution. 3. Q discipline, the order in which customers are served. FIFO, first in, first out, like a ticket counter. LIFO, last in, first out, like stack of plates. Priority basis example, emergency patients in hospitals. 4. Capacity of the system, maximum number of customers that can wait, like limited seats in a waiting hall. Example. 
Imagine a bank with one cashier. Customers arrive randomly at an average of 10 per hour and the cashier can serve 12 per hour. Using queuing theory, the manager can calculate average waiting time of customers, average number of people in the queue, probability that the cashier is idle. This helps in deciding whether to add another cashier during busy hours. Importance in operations research. Better service helps reduce customer waiting time. Efficient resource use avoids keeping too many idle servers, saving money. Decision making managers can decide how many service counters, doctors or machines are needed. Applications Banks, hospitals, airports, supermarkets, call centers, IT servers and manufacturing systems. Conclusion Queuing theory balances customer satisfaction, short waiting and cost efficiency, not too many idle servers. That is why it is an essential tool in operations research for managing real-world service systems. Easy tip, remember a queue as ASDC arrival, service, discipline, capacity. Next important long question is 4. Solve a problem on queuing theory, single server model, and interpret the results. Exam-friendly single server, MM1, queuing problem solved and interpreted in simple words. Problem example. A bank has one cashier. Customers arrive at an average rate lambda is equal to 10 per hour poison. The cashier serves at an average rate mu is equal to 12 per hour exponential service. Find average number in queue system, average waiting times, server utilization and probability that the system is empty. Formulas MM1 Utilization Rho is equal to lambda mu. Average number in system, L is equal to row, 1 row. Average number in Q, LQ is equal to row 2, 1 row. Average time in system, W is equal to 1, mu lambda. Average waiting time in Q, WQ is equal to row, mu lambda. Probability system empty, P0 is equal to 1 row. Calculation, step by step. Rho is equal to 10 twelfths is equal to 0.833333383.33% utilization, cashier busy most of the time. L is equal to 0 0.833333, 1-0.833333 is equal to 0 0.833333 0.166667 is equal to 5.05 customers on average in system. LQ is equal to 0.833333 to slash 0.166667 is equal to 0.6944440. 1666667 is equal to 4.16674.17 waiting in Q. W is equal to 1, 12 to 10, is equal to a half is equal to 0 0.5 or 30 minutes average time in system. WQ is equal to 0 0.833333, 12 to 10, is equal to 0 0.833332 is equal to 0 0.416667 or 25 minutes average waiting in Q. P0 is equal to 1-0.833333 is equal to 0.166667.16.67% chance cashier is idle. Interpretation simple. On average 5 people are in the bank, being served plus waiting. A new customer waits about 25 minutes before service, total time in bank 30 minutes. The cashier is busy 83% of the time, quite loaded. There's only a 1 in 6 chance the cashier is idle. Practical advice to reduce waiting, either add another cashier, make it multi-server, or increase service speed, train cashier, simplify operations.
Even a small increase in mu greatly cuts weights.